Now let us consider a totally different aspect. We have considered that the body is submerged in a liquid while doing all our calculations. Now let us say the body is partially submerged. We again have this liquid container filled up by that liquid to some height and we have a solid body which is floating on the surface of this liquid. We again have the atmospheric pressure acting here. Note that there is no liquid above this. Hence, it is not possible for a liquid which is not there to apply some pressure. Hence, we will have only P atm here. Let's say here we have P atm again. Also, we will have the pressure due to this height of the liquid. Let's say the liquid is again rho. Say we write rho only this time. And this height is say small h. Let's say the height of this entire body is capital H. So the pressure beneath this body is going to be rho times g times h. Now, the net pressure due to this pressure and the pressure at the, at the bottom of this body will be or say we consider the force directly. The F net due to the liquid is going to be this quantity times let us say the cross sectional area of the body is again A times A minus this quantity times A. This is again going to give me Note that again we are finding that the net force acting due to the liquid pressure on the body is again the mass, sorry, the weight of the liquid displaced by this body, which is basically our Archimedes principle. This is going to be the volume occupied by this body, which is submerged in the liquid, times the rho of the liquid will give us the mass of the liquid displaced. This times g is going to be the weight of the liquid displaced. If we balance the net forces again, we consider the weight and the force due to the pressure again and then balance off. Here we assume that the body is afloat. That means it is floating on the surface of this liquid and it is in equilibrium. Assuming this and balancing of forces, we have, because this was in the upward direction, we have the mass of the body times g getting equal to mass of the liquid displaced times g which is going to be equal to say the density of the body was rho s we have rho s times the volume of the body which is a into h this is the mass times g is equal to mass of the liquid displaced which comes from here rho 
times a into small h because this is the only part which is submerged times g. This is now equal to or this equation leads to after cancelling of these and these quantities we have small h getting equal to rho s by rho into capital H. Let us write this separately. We had h is equal to rho s by rho into capital H. This is the fraction of the body which is submerged. Let us denote this by eta. This is equal to rho s by rho known as the fraction of body submerged in the liquid. Please note that throughout our calculations, we are assuming that the cross-sectional area of this body is constant. We might have a different case or we might have to do extended calculations if we consider that the body has variable cross-sectional area across its height. Now let us consider a different aspect of our discussion.